Good day folks, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the Mavic Mini and what settings you can change when it comes to videos and photos. The Mavic Mini uses a new app called DJI Fly. It's a very simplified version of the Go 4 app. It's designed to make flying easy for new beginners, so there's not a lot of settings that you can change, but there are a few. So let's just jump right in and take a look. So this is not a full walkthrough of the DJI Fly app. Basically, we're just going to take a look at what settings you can change when it comes to shooting videos and taking photos. It's a very common question that I've been asked over the last couple days. The thing you have to keep in mind is that the DJI Mavic Mini was launched by DJI as a way to attract maybe new customers. For a beginner pilot, flying a drone for the first time can be a little intimidating and a little overwhelming. And that's why DJI decided to make a new simplified app as not to overwhelm new pilot. They give you everything you need to fly and create some really nice stunning content, but definitely Definitely don't have the fine tuning that you do with something like the Mavic 2 Pro. And I'll kind of bounce around between this top view and a screen recording so you can see a little bit clearer. So right now I'm in photo mode and you can tell by this little icon right up here, the little square. If I go ahead and click on it, you can see we get another menu that pops up. And here we have photo, video, our quick shots. And to the left of that, we actually have a sub menu there. You can see I have photo selected, but we can either do a single image or we can do a time shot. Basically with a single image, it's just what it sounds like. It's gonna take one single photo. If we do a time shot, it's gonna take a series of photos in different intervals. If we click on it, you can see another sub menu will pop up with our interval. We can go all the way from two seconds up to 60 seconds. So there's a few things you can do with that timed photo settings. First of all, you can just fly around casually and the drone will automatically take photos at whatever interval you have it set at. So for a new pilot, that's kind of nice because you can just focus on flying and avoiding obstacles and uh, you know see where you're headed. And you don't have to worry about hitting the shutter button every time you want to take a photo. Uh, the other thing you can do with it, if you're really good and smooth on the sticks, you can actually make a hyperlapse with it. Doing it that way, there's a lot more manual work you have to do. You have to take all the individual photos that it captured, put them into a timeline and create the video. So that's the basic photo options there. Uh, the next thing we could do is go over to video. You can see here we have two resolutions that we can choose to shoot at. We've got 1080 and we've got 2.7K. At 1080 we can shoot at a couple different frames per second. We can go from 25 up to 60 frames per second. When in 2.7K you get the option of 25 or 30 frames per second. And right below video we have our quick shots. Now when I click on it, it's not going to let me launch the menu because in order to use the quick shots, you have to have the drone in the air. Basically quick shots allow you to capture some really interesting dynamic video all autonomously. You just hit a few buttons and the drone will do all the work. So definitely a fun feature to play around with. So I've got it back to the main menu here and we are in photo mode. There are a few adjustments you can make. Down here at the bottom you can see we have a few buttons. We can actually change a few settings when in photo mode. This first option you can see it says EV, that's our exposure value. We have an AE lock button and we have a button right there that says auto. So we can click on the exposure value and we can adjust it if need be. If our exposure is too dark we can kind of brighten things up a bit or if it's too bright, we can lower it down a little bit. Now, if you're brand new to drones, maybe you've just picked up the Mavic Mini as your very first drone. Uh, what you're going to find sometimes when you're flying, uh, you've got a very bright sky and the uh, foreground or the, the ground is really dark. The ground is going to be underexposed possibly, or maybe the sky is overexposed. Sometimes it's just a matter of adjusting your camera angle by using that scroll wheel at the back here. If you have too much sky in there, but you want to get more of the ground, if you just lower your camera down a bit so there's not so much sky showing, the image is going to be better exposed. The problem, however, is sometimes your exposure is going to be jumping around as you're moving and flying in different directions. To help prevent the exposure values from jumping around and uh, getting some really uneven videos, sometimes it's beneficial to lock the exposure. So right now the camera's trying to expose for everything and if I click on this white wall up here You can see how the image changes it kind of exposes for that white wall now The desk there has gotten darker and again We can go back and click on the desk you can see that the exposure changes a bit if you've accidentally touched the screen and you don't want it to lock in on an exposure you can actually click the little x right at the top there but if you've got the exposure set the way you like it you can actually lock it in so it won't change and that's where you would hit that little lock button there you can see it turns yellow and that means the exposure is now locked so it doesn't matter if you click around trying to change it it's not going to because it's locked now if you're a person who likes to get a little bit creative with your photos we can actually switch it over to a manual mode if you look down at the bottom here there's a little camera icon right now it says auto but if we click on on it it's going to switch over to manual and you can see here it gives us a few new settings we can set our shutter speed and we can set our ISO so if you're a photographer and you like to uh, get creative with your shots that's uh, some very important settings there you can see we can click on them and then adjust them to whatever we need them to be if you want to go back to auto 
you just click on that button there. Now unfortunately changing the shutter speed and the ISO only works in photo mode. Uh, you can see here I'm now in video mode. Video mode still gives us our exposure value. You know, we can still adjust that if we want. And again, we can lock the exposure. But you can see that the button you would normally press to put it into manual mode is grayed out. And if I click on it, you can see there it says unable to switch camera modes in current shooting mode. So we can adjust things like our shutter speed or our ISO. Now the app that I'm using right now is still technically a beta app. DJI is going to be releasing the official version on the 11th of November. So that may change. I'm hoping it changes and they do give us a few more controls because uh, it's not going to be just new pilots that buy this drone. A lot of existing pilots are buying it just for the portability. So hopefully when DJI releases the final version uh, that will be available and uh, hopefully and if not, hopefully they do add some new features with uh, firmware updates. Now there are a few other things we can change if we go to our settings. Click those three dots up in the top right hand corner. So make sure you've selected camera at the top. The first thing we can do is change our photo aspect ratio from 4 by 3 to 16 by 9. You can see now that I'm back at the main menu and I'm still in photo mode, it's a lot wider because we're in that larger aspect ratio. If you're new to all this and you've changed some stuff and you're not quite sure what you've done, at the bottom here you can always reset your camera settings back to default. Now down here near the bottom you can see it says advanced settings. If we click on that, it does give us a few more options. Now here it gives us a couple tools that we can enable and disable. Uh, first of all we can turn on the histogram. Below that we can turn on grid lines. And they have a couple different variations of grid lines. And that just kind of helps you line up shots. We can also turn on overexposure warning. It has an option there It says video subtitles. I really don't know what that is. I've never played around with that. So we'll just leave that as is. Right below that you can see it says cache when recording. Basically what that is when you're flying your drone. And this is similar across the board for all the DJI drones. It's going to create a low res version of the video files on your smartphone. It doesn't put the high res files on there yet because it doesn't want to use up all your phone's memory. If that's not something you want to use you can turn that right off. And right below that you can see we can actually set how much space is set aside on your phone for the cached files. By default it's at two gigabytes but you can set it to whatever you want. If you're going to be doing a lot of filming and you want those low res versions on there you want to set that to a higher number otherwise the older ones will get deleted. So that's basically it for camera settings on the Mavic Mini at this point in time. Like I said, I'm really hoping that they do kind of uh, make it a little bit more advanced uh, for those who want those advanced settings. And uh, lastly here quickly, I just want to show you if you want to go in and preview your media, you can click on that little play button down there at the bottom. And you can see it's just like some of the other DJI apps. It gives us a copy of all our uh, videos and photos. Now going back to the cached files that we talked about, you can see here at the top it says not downloaded. So that means the version that we have on our phone right now is the low res version. If we go into one of these files, Again, it's telling us there it's a cached version. Now we can play it. If you want to download the HD version of the video or photo from the drone to your phone, all you can do is click on this download button here, and that's going to copy it over. Well, folks, that's basically it for my video. Hopefully you found it enjoyable and got some value out of it. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos, and we'll see you in the next one.